I love the smell of uh, molten filament in the morning. <laughs> well, anyway, so let's talk about the <laughs> upgrade 3D printer, large size 300 by 300 by 350 millimeters. Core XY, high precision DIY FDM 3D printer kit, Core XY again with double Z axis. Well, we're talking about the Creativity Elf 3D printer, which looks exactly, or if not exactly, 90% exactly like the Saint Smart Coreception 300, but there's a few differences in some may seem a little better than the coreception. One of them may be the actual T-nuts on the Z-lead screws. They seem totally different and I never experienced them. Just stick around for this one if you can. Uh, Alright, so let's get into it. The quantity of marketing. If there's anything that this 3D printer is not lacking at is the quantity of marketing. So basically they put pictures and uh, information about every little detail that they have on this 3D printer, which is kind of cool because sometimes it's very hard to judge a 3D printer by just trying to figure out its specifications and see if it's a good purchase. However, this time we locked out because there's a few people that actually reviewed this 3D printer fairly after they purchased. Right off the bat, this 3D printer comes in four versions. Uh, two is direct extruder and two is Bowden style or remote style extruder. So basically you have the basic kit where you get the filament and then you get an SD card and then you have the other kit where you get the magnetic sticky pad for your bed but it's still direct extruder. And then you have the remote extruder, which is kind of like the basic. And then you have the other option, which they throw in a BMG style extruder for the remote or Bowden style extruder, along with the magnetic sticky pad. So these are the options this 3D printer. No, these are the flavors <laughs> this 3D printer comes in. So right off the bat, I want to cover that it comes with the TMC2208 stepper controllers for quiet operation. And I think there might be a picture where they, you know, they show somebody sleeping next to the 3D printer. If you have the earth to do that just don't do it because we don't know how molten plastic inhalation will affect your lungs and everything in between those lungs and it's kind of funny because they yeah all these 3d printers they advertise this high precision situation like this one advertises power failure recovery high precision strong stability material detection energy saving and large size molding which is the actual volume of the damn thing now the interesting thing none of these stepper controlled 3d printers are high precision they're all the same precision that a stepper controller of a 1.8 degree arc or 0.9 degree arc can do for you. Maybe the Core XYs are a little more precise because of the belt systems. Usually you get 200 steps for a stepper controller to complete a full circle, but because of the Core XY mechanism, this thing requires like 640. Oh, anyway, high precision. I think that's just a fluff of marketing for high precision. There's nothing high precision about it. It's just a regular precision. All the 3D printers have some sort of precision and that's that. What I like to talk about here is the actual power failure which is great and every printer has it since like I don't know how many years ago but the things that we're interested about are the 24 volts which it has I mean switching to 110 option and 220 so that's great because you have the basics that everybody kind of has grown to be accustomed to like one nice addition is that it has a fuse inside the power plug I don't even know if I ever knew that this is a thing, but it's a good thing that they advertise because if you ever are in a position where your 3D printer doesn't power up at all, maybe you should check the fuse. So the direct extruder is a Titan extruder option. We don't know if that VGA is easy to deal with or easy to tweak or modify or add components through the pinout so we can improve. Or you have to kind of overhaul it completely if you want to upgrade things in your hot end slash direct extruder. The Z-Lead screw T-nuts are different and they seem to be manually adjustable with a tension screw which will improve the tension on the actual Z-Lead screw of the T-nut itself. This means that it will reduce the slop and also improve accuracy on your 3D printer. However, finding that sweet spot may prove difficult. Furthermore, the motherboard on this particular ELF 3D printer seems to be an upgraded version from the reviews online because it claims to support a BL touch and a 3D touch and it's a 0.12 motherboard MKS. So basically, if you decide to buy this 3D printer, make sure that the motherboard is compatible with your needs. Two other features are regarding the bed itself. One is that the bed is cushioned on the bottom to increase the speed at which the bed reaches the certain temperature you need to. And then the second one, it's kind of intriguing because the bed frame, it's independent on each side. So you do not have a contiguous frame which holds the bed in place. So I am assuming that this may allow the bed to actually get desynchronized a little faster than on a normal 3D printer. But then again, 
my assumptions can be wrong because I never dealt with this. However, their claim is that this would improve the time it takes to install the bed when you get the 3D printer. To me, this seems counterintuitive, especially if this type of innovation actually proves to be detrimental because you have the bed that is more prone to disalignment faster than on a regular bed frame. Technically speaking, this shouldn't happen and you still have the knobs to adjust the bed and also you have the BL touch if you decide to buy it or a 3D touch. Well, one ironic thing is the translation of the tool random kit, which I kind of think they wanted to mean like a sorted tool kit rather than random kit. And it comes with the nozzle, it comes with the spatula to remove the 3D print, it comes with the card, the needle for the nozzle declogging, the Allen wrenches, the cable ties, the filament rack, the PTFE tube, and the Play-Doh 170, which is the actual shear for cutting the filament. Overall, the reviews I've seen on this 3D printer, people say that you have to throw a lot of time at it to get it to work properly. Some people say that they got it to work pretty well with uh, throwing time at it. But some other people had problems with the uh, temperature. I don't know, this 3D printer is in between. It's scary. You have to get really lucky with it. If you decide this 3D printer is for you, then you know you got to get really lucky or you have to have a lot of time to throw at it to get it to work properly. So take care.